Hi, my name is Faith Weber and I'm part of the Vertical Takeoff and Landing Capstone Group at OU. We spent the semester working with the Center for Autonomous Sensing and Sampling on a high endurance vertical takeoff plane. I worked on structures and electronics of the plane. Hi, my name is Andrew Derryberry and I focus on aerodynamics and electronics. Hi, my name is Nathan Herring and I specialized in design and fabrication. Hi, my name is Steven Trellis. I focus on the structure of our aircraft as well as our stability calculations. My name is Alex Zhang and I worked on 3D modeling and structures for the airplane. We were faced with the challenge of designing and building a high endurance vertical takeoff and landing drone for use by the Center of Autonomous Sensing and Sampling. Our design seeks to carry a 5 pound payload of scientific instruments over a period of at least 60 minutes. Fixed wing aircraft are well suited for high endurance missions due to the low required power to maintain flight, needing only to overcome drag. However, fixed wing aircraft are limited in their ability to take off and land with sufficient room to accelerate. Rotorcraft are able to take off and land from just about anywhere, but must produce thrust at least equal to their own weight, drastically decreasing endurance. This problem is solved by blending characteristics of both fixed wing and multi-rotor platforms into a specialized vehicle with the strengths of both. This results in an aircraft that is typically more complex in both design and manufacturing. Existing VTOL platforms such as the Boeing Osprey and Hawker Harrier were revolutionary in their design. Thanks to open source autopilot systems and a community of support, VTOL development is within reach. This semester we constructed two iterations of our VTOL design designated by Mark 1 and Mark 2. Mark 2 was improved based on the shortcomings and lessons learned from Mark 1. Our design sought to find a balance between mission capability and ease of production. Actuation points, complex curves, and the number of components affect production difficulty. We took inspiration from the E-Flight Convergence. This model features three motors, two of which tilt forward during fixed wing flight mode. During fixed wing flight, two elevons control pitch and roll, while differential thrust handles yaw control. In multi-rotor flight, the two forward motors actuate to counter the yaw moment produced from an odd number of propellers. This type of airframe is also supported by the Pixhawk PX4 Pro flight control system, making it a convenient choice for our mission. The conceptual design process analyzed the balance between aircraft geometry, weight distribution, and power requirements. The most challenging obstacle during the conceptual process was satisfying stability in both flight modes. Static stability for fixed-wing aircraft requires a center of mass forward of the center of pressure while stability for multi-rotors requires a center of mass near the center of thrust. Wing sweep was used to change both pitch authority and center of pressure location. Our design required the center of gravity to be located near the trailing edge of the root airfoil. The onboard control system is capable of resolving imperfections as long as they are not too drastic. The total weight was calculated by summing the masses of potential parts, payload, and airframe estimation. The geometry of the aircraft was edited to achieve the required endurance at the estimated weight. Once the geometry of the aircraft was completed, it was modeled in open VSP. The model was then analyzed using VSP Aero for fixed wing flight. The software displayed the aerodynamic performance and the current design including stability, center of pressure location, and lift to drag. The model was then modified until the fixed wing flight was stable and also satisfied the characteristics for multi-rotor flight. The final design was then remodeled and analyzed in XLR5, confirming the analysis. The final design featured a wingspan of 7 feet, an aspect ratio of 8, and a planform area of 6.25 square feet. Winglets provided yaw stability and 3-inch elevons spanning down only a portion of the wing were sufficient for pitch and roll authority. The fuselage has a maximum width of 8 inches and a maximum height of 4 inches, providing ample room for both the scientific payload and flight instruments. The propulsion system was carefully chosen to fit both flight modes. Traditional aircraft power systems are most efficient at cruising airspeed. Our design's fixed wing cruising airspeed was 45 feet per second, while multi-rotor speed is effectively static. The rear motor was only active during the multi-rotor mode and was selected to perform well under high lift, low advance ratio conditions. A 300 kV T-motor anti-gravity 5006 motor paired with a shallow pitched 16-inch folding propeller was selected. 
After transition to fixed wing flight, the rear propeller folded back into the flow, reducing drag. The two front power modules were active in all flight modes, so the motors were carefully selected ensuring high performance in both vertical and horizontal flight. Two 520 kV Brother Hobby Tornado T7 4215 motors paired with 13-inch tri-bladed propellers were chosen. Three-bladed propellers were selected to mitigate vibration in the motor mounts. To power the entire propulsion system, a 6,000 milliamp hour, six-cell lithium polymer battery was used enabling a projected flight time of just over one hour. The motor actuation was the most mechanically complex and failure-prone system in the aircraft. The two front motors were mounted to plates that could be actuated by high-torque servos to transition flight modes. Lubricated bearings and laser-cut plywood construction were used to reduce mechanical play and maximize strength. This is a large improvement on the first iteration, which was solely 3D printed from PLA plastic. A PixHawk PX4 Pro was selected for flight control. The platform boasts extreme processing power and extreme customizability, and is the go-to system for hobby-grade autonomous flight. The platform is capable of numerous different airframe configurations and missions. The PixHawk was configured using Q Ground Control, a companion software used for vehicle setup, mission planning, and execution. Q Ground Control was used to configure the motors and servos, calibrate all sensors, and track the flight properties during missions. This software made it possible to test motors and servos before flight, which verified that PixHawk was configured correctly in accordance with E-Flight Convergence model. A 915 MHz telemetry radio system transmitted live data during flight. The foam core skin provides the majority of torsional stiffness, while the carbon rods assist in bending strength and disassembly. Special structural consideration was taken when joining the forward motor booms to the wing core. The plywood booms are integrated into the ribs of the wing core for maximum strength and resistance to vibration. The rear motor boom is integrated into the fuselage and is designed to contain the battery. The battery can be shifted to tune the CG location to different payload weights, similar to a counterweight. The first flight test with the Mark 1 was successfully performed indoors with the goal of validating multirotor hovering capability. The control system easily tuned out any oscillations and the craft settled into a stable hover. The next opportunity to fly presented an environmental challenge. The wind speed was approaching gusts of 20 miles per hour. This allowed for a hover test in more extreme flying conditions similar to what may be experienced in the field. Because it is a flying wing, any forward tilt to combat wind speed can result in large amounts of negative lift. This was eliminated by tilting both motors forward into the wind. No attempt for transition was made due to these conditions. On a day with little wind, the first transition to fixed wing flight was attempted. The transition took place and the plane accelerated to nearly 70 miles per hour. The control system easily trimmed the wing.
an attempt to transition back to multi-rotor mode was made. The wing gained altitude and the signal to transition was given. Heads up! It's all right, man. It's okay. <laughs> the aircraft flew into the ground at nearly 90 miles per hour, obliterating the entire airframe. However, only one propeller was lost, and all electronics were either functional or able to be mended. Similar to crumple zones in cars, the airframe absorbed nearly all of the shock and spared valuable electronics. The only true loss was time. We immediately began on a second iteration using lessons learned from the first to construct a truly beautiful aircraft. Flight logs and video showed evidence of a structural failure in the starboard motor swivel. This caused an uncontrollable roll and loss of altitude. Because the aircraft was in its multi-rotor state, control surfaces that would otherwise be available were locked. The next transition test will be performed at a lower flight speed and with control surfaces active. At this time of the video's creation, the Mark II VTOL is preparing for a maiden flight. Wish us luck.